Greetings again, everybody. Welcome to our talk on eclampsia. Now, if you have not watched my video on pre-eclampsia, I strongly, strongly suggest that you go back and watch that video uh, simply because in this video, I'm going to assume that you understand uh, how preeclampsia is diagnosed and how uh, it is worked up and how it's managed. Um, most patients with eclampsia have a preeclampsia first, and then they go on to develop eclampsia. So it's very it's it's very important that you understand um, preeclampsia in order to understand what we do when the patient goes on to develop full blown eclampsia. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the I button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you uh, who have already stepped up to donate. And if you uh, can't donate, at least feel free to subscribe. Okay, uh, so um, the, these are the various hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. I do videos on all of these, so uh, you can go back and watch them uh, if you haven't yet. All right, now this is how preeclampsia gets diagnosed as well as some of the other hypertensive disorders of pregnancy. Eclampsia is a complication of preeclampsia. So some patients with e preeclampsia go on to develop eclampsia. Eclampsia is sim as simply the onset of seizures in a woman with preeclampsia. Now, sometimes they may not have a standing diagnosis of preeclampsia. Maybe they had it and they were never diagnosed. Uh, maybe they're not getting good prenatal care. Uh, but pretty much all of these patients are going to have had preeclampsia, whether it was caught or not, and then they go on to develop eclampsia. So eclampsia is just preeclampsia with seizures. 75% will have had not just preeclampsia, but severe preeclampsia, which remember is basically regular preeclampsia, mild preeclampsia with a severe sign like headaches, visual changes, right upper quadrant pain, and so forth. There's a big list of them, or it could even include HELP syndrome. 25% of seizures occur before labor, 50% occur during labor, that's important to know, um, and 25% occur postpartum. Maternal mortality is near 2%, so this is pretty significant, and the fetal mortality is about 1 in 14. Clinical manifestations, obviously it's going to be a seizure. Uh, but it's typically alongside a history of preeclampsia. There's a number of possible fetal manifestations, which we're not going to go into. Now, there are a number of symptoms that may occur before a, uh, an eclamptic seizure. And as you can see here, if you're familiar with your, um, with your severe symptoms for preeclampsia, it's pretty much those. Now, our management is based on stabilizing the patient. So first, we're going to make sure that they have their uh, oxygenation proper. Uh, so, you know, you do your ABCs. Primarily here, we're going to be giving 100% oxygen via face mask. And then we need to do seizure control. Uh, and so what that means in this case is magnesium sulfate. Now, typically when a person, a non-pregnant person is having a seizure, um, what we do is we give them benzodiazepines. We'll, you know, start out with, with a benzo like Valium or something like that. However, uh, when they are pregnant and having a seizure, an eclamptic seizure, we give magnesium sulfate as first line, and then you can go on to do benzodiazepines or phenytoin as a second line. We need to control any severe hypertension that exists. So if she is hypertensive, we give labetalol IV. Uh, remember to be judicious though, because if you quickly drop the blood pressure, uh, then you can have uteroplacental inadequacy and that can lead to fetal compromise. So we typically go for 140, uh, I don't know why my writing isn't working on here, but we go for 140 to 160. So we just want to get it down a little bit, get it down below 160. We're then going to start cardio tochometry. That's basically fetal heart monitoring. I suggest going and watching my fetal heart monitor video if you haven't done that yet. 
And then the definitive management, of course, like preeclampsia, is delivery, but we only deliver her after the patient is stabilized. Now, if she's less than 32 weeks, we are always going to give betamethasone, or you can give dexamethasone. Um, if she's more than 34 weeks, you don't have to worry about giving steroids. If she's between 32 and 34 weeks, you can give steroids if you want, or you can do a, 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 a amniocentesis and check for fetal lung maturity and then make your decision based off that. Postpartum management is going to be to continue the magnesium sulfate for at least 12 to 24 hours. And again, postpartum seizures are managed the same way with magnesium sulfate. This is my cheat sheet here um, to uh, sort of distinguish the various causes of uh, hypertension in pregnancy. All right, so recapping, eclampsia is the onset of seizures in a woman with preeclampsia. The best initial step is to stabilize the patient. We will give seizure control with magnesium sulfate and then blood pressure control with labetalol and then fetal monitoring with cardiotocometry. These women are going to be delivered. Once the patient is stable, we're going to admit her to L&D, administer steroids for fetal lung maturity. If she's below 32 weeks, you don't have to do it if she's above 34 weeks. If she's between 32 and 34 weeks, you can either give the steroids or you can get a, an amniocentesis to determine whether or not you need to do that. And then we will continue the magnesium sulfate for about 24 hours postpartum because 25% of eclamptic seizures occur in the postpartum period.